Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we'll be taking an in-depth look with the all-new 2017 Chevrolet Volt Premier. This will be an in-depth review where we'll power it up, talk about the hybrid electric drivetrain, significant changes for 2017. We'll take it on a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in and get started. Before I begin, you can also power on the vehicle remotely. All you have to do is just make sure the vehicle is locked, then hold down the little starter button to go. A smart key entry system is standard on the Volt. Just keep the key fob in your pocket and utilize the buttons on all four door handles to lock and unlock the vehicle. Our tester is finished in silver ice metallic and features a very unique two-tone combination of jet black and brandy leather upholstery. To start, all you have to do is just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then simply put your foot on the brake and hit the blue button in the dash to go. Direction is provided via rack and pinion steering with variable electric power assistance. It's routed through a new three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel with tasteful touches of bright work, soft-touch multifunction controls, and grip bolsters at 10 and 2. The steering ratio is 15.7 to 1 and it takes three turns to lock. The turning circle measures 36.4 feet. All of that is pretty similar to the last Volt, but I think the new car delivers a lot more from a dynamic standpoint. For starters, it sheds about 240 pounds and features a redesigned battery pack that lowers the car's center of gravity a bit. Alongside a redesigned chassis that's both stiffer and lighter than before, the Volt handles spiritedly through the corners while maintaining a pretty smooth and well-controlled ride. It's not a sports car, but it certainly has a number of sporty characteristics for its segment, including sharp, responsive steering with an appropriately weighted feel. Along with a backup camera, front and rear parking sensors, and both parallel and perpendicular parking assist, our tester is equipped with lane keeping assist. When active, it'll monitor the lanes in front of you, delivering little nudges if it detects you drifting over the line, helping you keep a linear path. The semi-autonomous nature of this system will basically steer the car by itself for brief periods of time if you let go of the wheel. Of course, the car will soon prompt you to grab the wheel once again. If you prefer, lane keeping can be left off. This one also features blind spot monitoring, forward collision alert, and rear cross traffic alert. The Volt's transmission is a continuously variable automatic featuring a 2.64 to 1 final drive and a conventional leather wrapped console shifter. It's quick and peppy around town with plenty of power on tap. Power is put to the ground more effectively now, making the car more responsive. We'll discuss the reason behind all that later in the video. What's really impressive is how quiet the car is, especially in EV mode. It's something you'd expect out of this segment, but the Volt makes great strides over its predecessor, including a new extended range powertrain that significantly improves noise vibrations and harshness levels, leading to a more refined and hushed cabin. Only under heavier loads does the sound of the engine become more noticeable, but in normal driving you can barely hear it if and when it does come on to assist in charging the battery. Driving under electric power is always entertaining, especially with the instant availability of torque. There's a slight hint of the characteristic whirring noise you'd expect from an EV, but again, it's all remarkably quiet. General wind and road noise have all been reduced thanks to improved aerodynamics and a low 0.28 drag coefficient. One of the neatest new features is regen on demand. Behind the upper left spoke of the steering wheel, it's a small paddle. After lifting off the throttle, you can pull on that paddle to provide an added measure of deceleration, maximizing the energy that's recaptured in conjunction with the regenerative brakes. I believe this feature was also used on the Cadillac ELR. The system is so effective that, if timed properly, you can actually use it to slow down and even stop the majority of times without having to use the pedal. 
Like before, the Volt comes with four different driving modes, including Normal, Sport, Mountain, and Hold. Normal is the default day-to-day -day setting, while Sport increases throttle response. Mountain enables the engine and battery to combine power in order to boost performance when going up steep grades. Hold, like the name suggests, holds the battery's current state of charge for later use. In other words, it switches the car into extended range operation for long distance highway commutes. Once you arrive to your destination, presumably in the city, you can then run the car in full EV mode for maximum efficiency. So let's go ahead and flip on the automatic optional partial LED and telebeam headlamps, as well as the hazards. All four windows are automatic down, but the driver's side window is automatic up as well. Now let's go and check out the exterior, shall we? When closing the door of the vehicle, we'll sound the horn a few times to let you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. I had my first chance to experience the Volt at the tail end of 2011, right as the 2012 model started to roll out. After spending a weekend with it learning how the Voltec powertrain operated and what it was like to live with on a daily basis, I was convinced that Chevrolet had something special. It offered a lot of style and unique features that made it stand out amongst the competition. Compared to your traditional hybrid, the Volt is an extended range electric vehicle. This means that the onboard electric motors are the primary driving force. There is an engine on board, but it mostly serves as a generator to supply additional charge to the battery as needed and only provides additional driving force to the wheels under certain circumstances. This gives you the ability to enjoy pure EV driving where it matters the most, such as when traveling through city centers, and still be able to take an extended trip without the worry of limited range. It competes against similar plug-in hybrids such as the Toyota Prius plug-in, Ford C-Max Energy, and perhaps even the BMW i3 when equipped with the range extender option. Last year, Chevrolet launched the all-new second-generation Volt. Similar to how its predecessor was launched back in 2011, 2016 Volts were only offered in limited markets, I believe it was 11 states, with full availability following for 2017. The new Volt offers a lot more in terms of driving range, efficiency, and most importantly, refinement. Beginning with the new platform that's both lighter and stronger, the Volt features a thoroughly updated two-motor drive unit, a larger and more powerful four-cylinder engine, and a redesigned battery pack. All of this put together leads to a car that's faster, lighter, and more agile than the last offering. Of course, it still retains the general shape and five-door hatchback layout as the prior Volt. Thanks to a tad more interior room and more efficient battery packaging, the Volt now has the ability to seat up to five people while its predecessor can only seat four. The wheelbase is longer by 0.4 inches accompanied by a 3.3 inch increase in overall length. The roof line sits 0.2 inches lower and it's 0.8 inches wider. Curb weight drops by about 240 pounds. The styling, while less polarizing and distinctive as before, is a modern evolution of the last Volt, fine-tuned in the wind tunnel for improved aerodynamics. Emphasis has been placed on greater attention to detail with the bodywork, combining chiseled lines and unique forms, such as the neck and duct inspired roofline and blacked out tail sections. A couple standout features include new active grill shutters in the front fascia and sculpted tail lamps. The shutters behind the grill manage airflow into the engine compartment. For example, when traveling down the highway, less airflow is needed for cooling, so the shutters close to block air from entering the engine compartment. This not only allows for the designer's ability to shorten the car's front overhang and widen the grill opening, but it also reduces drag. The partial LED tail lamps are very well integrated into the rear fascia and flow with the curvature of the rear flanks, bumper cover, and hatch to eliminate airflow disruption. The Volt is offered in two well-equipped trim levels, including the $34,095 LT and the $38,445 Premier. Our tester is equipped with a handful of other options on top of what comes with the Premier, such as the Driver Confidence 2 package and MyLink with navigation. Including an $875 destination charge, it stickers for $40,155. The Volt LT comes standard with 5-spoke silver panted wheels while the Premier features these split Y-spoke ultra-bright machine wheels with silver panted pockets. The latter is also available with gloss black pockets as a standalone option for both the LT and Premier. All measure 17 by 7 inches and are wrapped in 21550 Michelin Energy Saver all season tires. They can handle between 0.8 and 0.85 g of lateral acceleration. The brakes consist of internally ventilated front and solid rear discs that measure 10.9 and 10.4 inches in diameter respectively. They're paired to single piston calipers that help the Volt stop from 60 miles an hour in about 120 feet. 
four wheel ABS, traction control, and stability control all come standard. Brake energy regeneration is also included, helping capture additional energy every time you decelerate. Like its predecessor, the chassis and suspension architecture is part of GM's Delta II platform, also shared with the Chevrolet Cruze. The chassis has been redesigned to feature more high strength steel and aluminum to improve strength and reduce weight. One difference to point out is that the front subframe is no longer isolated by rubber mounts, but solidly mounted, leading to improved road feel without a noticeable increase in interior noise. Chevrolet claims that there's more effective structural load pass in the frame in addition to reinforced rocker panel structures and more. Like entry models of the Cruze, there's an independent McPherson strut front suspension and a torsion beam in the rear with coil springs at each corner and a direct acting hollow front stabilizer bar. The Volt is not offered with the Z-Link rear suspension found in the Cruze Premier we tested recently. Overall length is 180.4 inches with a width of 71.2 inches and a height of 56.4 inches. It rides on a 106.1 inch wheelbase and has a curb weight of around 3,543 pounds. The second generation Volt features an all new Voltec propulsion system consisting of the battery, drive unit, range extender, and power electronics. Compared to the prior setup, both EV range and overall fuel economy see big jumps, making the Volt an even more efficient commuter car. The cell chemistry in the lithium-ion batteries has been revised, increasing total storage capacity from 17.1 kilowatt hour to 18.4 kilowatt hour. With the ability to hold more energy per cell, the total cell count was able to be reduced from 288 to 192, helping shed 21 pounds of weight and making things more compact. Total EV range is now claimed to be 53 miles, up from 38 miles. Total driving range, including a full tank of gas, rises from about 380 to 420 miles. A thermal control system helps maintain the battery's electric range over the car's life. The Volt's 111 kilowatt electric drive unit benefits from a new twin motor design that's up to 12% more efficient and weighs 99 pounds less. The two motors can operate individually or in tandem depending on power requirements. The prior Volt technically had two motors as well, one large and one smaller, but they weren't able to work together in the same way the new car can. Having this cooperative ability boosts low speed acceleration quite a bit and makes power more readily available when needed, such as highway overtaking. The drive unit delivers 149 horsepower and 294 pound-feet of torque. That's 21 pound-feet of torque more than before. In conjunction with the weight savings, the car is able to hit 60 miles an hour in 8.4 seconds, which should be between half and a full second quicker than the first gen. Top speed is still limited to 98 miles per hour. As we've stated, the Volt is an extended range electric vehicle, which means the wheels are driven by electric power. The onboard gas engine serves as a generator primarily, supplying extra juice when the battery runs low or if you want to maintain your current charge for later use. The new Atkinson Cycle 1.5 liter range extender replaces the previously used 1.4 liter unit, bringing more power and better fuel economy. Benefiting from all aluminum construction, dual overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder, dual variable valve timing, and direct fuel injection, it's a more modern power plant that also drops some weight. The compression ratio is rated at 12.5 to 1 with a maximum engine speed of 5,600 RPM. By itself, the new engine develops 101 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, and in when regular use, it's rated at a combined 42 miles per gallon. The Volt carries an 8.9 gallon fuel tank and runs on regular 87 octane, a plus over the 1.4 liter which required the use of premium. When used in pure electricity, the car is rated at an equivalent of 106 miles per gallon combined. With the Volt's standard 120 volt charger, it takes about 13 hours to charge a depleted battery. If you use a 240 volt charger, the time is slashed to approximately 4.5 hours. Some of the most significant changes to the second generation Volt, at least aesthetically, come with the interior. When compared to its predecessor, the new one has better build quality, more advanced technology, and a more ergonomically friendly layout, all wrapped up into a much more premium feeling environment. The cars come pretty well equipped as they are, but with the Premier trim they're downright luxurious, with standard perforated leather upholstery and more premium soft touch elements and all the essential touch points. Even when it comes to some of the plastics across the upper door panels and the dash, they're of much higher quality than before and actually have a texture very similar to the grain pattern on some of the soft touch material, keeping everything very uniform. 
I love Chevrolet's new dual cockpit theme, it kinda gives more of a personal environment for the front occupants. Especially in the two-tone color theme like you see here, they also have a light gray two-tone option. It all flows into the door panels around the dash and highlights around the center stack. Very, very pretty in person. The only real downside, if you really consider it a downside, is the fact that power front seats are not available. Even so, the manual adjustments are extremely easy to use, and you have height adjustment for both the driver and passenger alongside a manual tilting telescoping steering wheel. In the week that I had this press car, I thought the seats were pretty comfortable. They offered a good amount of padding and support, very similar to the cruise I tested not too long ago. I also like the attention to detail. All of these two-tone options are actually free of charge. You have color accent stitching and all of that good stuff, and it all works really, really well with the Galvano chrome across the dash. It just looks so much more expensive than it actually is. There's a surprising amount of storage located throughout the interior, including good sized storage pockets on the doors. The glove box is damped, it's not locking, but it does offer a good amount of space itself. With the Premier trim, you get standard heated front seats and heated rear seats. We'll talk about the backseat environment a little bit more later in the video. The seat belts are not adjustable, but the headrests are. You also have LED interior illumination. As far as safety, we talked about all the electronic features earlier in the video, but there's 10 airbags located throughout, including a driver's side and passenger side knee airbag. All in all, I really think this is one of the nicest interiors you could buy in this class. It's highly functional, there's a lot of interior space for the front occupants, and it's extremely eye-catching. The Volt comes standard with a 6 speaker audio system and an 8 inch MyLink infotainment system, while the Premier ups it to an 8 speaker Bose audio system including a subwoofer also featuring the MyLink system but with navigation. I've covered this system in prior videos so if you'd like to see it more in depth click the link in the top right hand corner of the video. The biggest difference here is the energy screen where you can track the flow of power, charging information as well as energy usage. Towards the top, of course, you have your side curtain airbags, and there's padded visors to either side with illuminated vanity mirrors. In the middle, there's an auto dimming rear view mirror with your OnStar controls, LED reading lamps, and hands free Bluetooth microphone. Continuing down the center stack, right beneath the infotainment system, there's a standard single zone electronic automatic climate control in this particular tester with three stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger. Of course, you have front and rear defrost, your different zones are in the middle, fan speed off to the left, and temperature off to the right. In addition to cool blue guide lights for easier nighttime use, there's an eco mode off to the far right to modulate the air conditioning system as necessary in favor of better efficiency. In the bottom of the forward part of the center console, there's two large grip handles and a pretty good amount of storage, in addition to a 12 volt power outlet, two USB ports, and an auxiliary input. Across the center console, like we briefly touched on earlier, you have your electronic parking brake and hazard switch to the left, a bit of storage to the right, as well as your various drive modes, parking sensor activation, parallel and perpendicular parking features, and traction control. Right behind that is two cup holders, as well as a large leather padded center console, 
that opens up into a pretty good amount of space. This one also features the available wireless phone charging tray. As far as the steering wheel, to the right hand side you have your hands-free telephone, voice commands, and controls for the driver information system that shows up in the digital instrument cluster. To the left hand side you have your cruise control, forward collision alert system, going between your radio presets, as well as your available heated steering wheel and lane keep and assist features. The reconfigurable 8-inch digital instrument cluster is a pretty cool feature carried over from the last Volt, but with much higher res graphics and a more comprehensive driver information system. Like many of General Motors' newest products, the driver info system is all located to the left-hand side and controlled by that arrow pad on the steering wheel. The vehicle information has things like your trip computer, some temperatures, uh, fuel data, and digital speed readout. Then you have audio, telephone, navigation. You can change the different screen modes to vary the different layouts depending on how much information that you want to show, and control some personalizable options and different settings of that nature. There's four different display modes that you can do. Classic is your basic setup, modern adds a green light around that actually changes colors depending on how you're driving, then you have classic enhance which adds two auxiliary gauges, and then modern enhance which is the same thing with the green ring around it. To the left hand side you have the battery charge, to the right hand side you have vehicle fuel. Behind the steering wheel you have your intermittent wipers, to the left hand side high beams, turn signals, and automatic high beam activation. Alrighty. Being that the car is virtually quiet when you open the door, it actually continues to beep until you close the door or go ahead and power off the vehicle. Now let's go ahead and climb into the back seat and check out overall space and amenities. Despite being a relatively intimate environment, the vault's back seat is not really hard to climb on into, and honestly, once you're inside, it's a pretty comfortable place to be. I'm 5'10", and with an ideal seating position for myself in front, I probably have between 1.5 and 2.5 and and inches of leg space. The backrest actually has a cutout here to give you a bit more wiggle room depending on where you put your legs. As far as comfort, just like the front, the back seat has a tremendous amount of padding It's very, very soft. I also like that the outer portions sit down nice and low, almost like bucket seats. They have good lateral support across the bottom and the top, excellent lower back support, and two adjustable headrests. That kind of brings me to my next point, as Chevrolet advertises the Volt as a five-passenger vehicle. And while that's true in a way, in other ways, it's kind of not, you know, kind of, sort of, kind of not. It's more like a four plus one. The fifth person would obviously sit in the middle right here. But as you can see, there's a huge drivetrain hump with, like, the battery and the, the running gear and all that kind of stuff. So if you are sitting in the outer portions like me and you want to sit in the middle, you have to shimmy your leg over like this it's not impossible but it's not fun <laughs> and the middle portion sits up way higher than the outer portion so you lose all head um, headspace basically i mean like i said i'm five foot ten i couldn't sit in the middle right here because i'd basically have to turn my head to the opposite side um, it's definitely a nice feature to have if you're shorter or um, if you have children you want to put a car seat in the middle that's probably the most ideal um, way to take advantage of the middle row seat but otherwise it's a full padded armrest that comes down right here two cup holders in the middle and this um, Volt Premier actually has the optional heated rear seats just on the lower cushion but definitely nice on those cold days overall head space is probably about an inch, inch and a half tops, and that's with my head all the way back, like underneath the rear glass here. Um, there's a big tin strip, so you don't have to worry about cooking your head on a hot summer day. As far as the rest of the amenities, it's pretty simple back here. There's not a whole lot of storage except for the um, seat back storage pockets. There's no additional cubbies across the door panels, and you don't have as many soft touch materials back here that you do on the front doors, um, namely across the middle portions and stuff. The only real um, softer type material is the rubberized portion across the armrest. But even so, I mean, build quality is absolutely fantastic and it's quite a step up over its predecessor. There's neat interior space. I mean, you have the middle row seat if needed for a car seat or the like. So now let's hop back out and check out trunk space. Ah! 
Outback, the Volt has 10.6 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seat. If you fold it down, which basically tumbles in a 60-40 split fashion, it expands cargo space all the way to the front, significantly increasing the overall volume. There's plenty of cargo tie-downs, illumination on the hatch itself, to the right-hand side is the Bose subwoofer, and to the left-hand side is a small storage cubby for the plug so you can charge up the vehicle's battery overnight. Underneath the trunk floor is a tire inflation system, as well as the standard 12-volt battery. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2017 Chevrolet Volt. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.